All right, so let's get into something uh, pretty crucial to understanding what's been happening in the Middle East. Okay. It's all about like what's normal in geopolitics. Yeah. You know, like with acceptable behavior on the world stage. Yeah. And we're going deep on some expert analysis that really unpacks this. Okay. It's uh, specifically looking at Israel's recent actions in Iran. What's so interesting here is how Israel is really trying to like reshape this normal to make their aggressive moves on Iran not just a one-time thing, right. but an accepted reality. Okay, yeah. that's a pretty big move. Yeah. So where do we even begin to break this down? What exactly happened? Well, imagine you're seeing news reports of Israeli airstrikes hitting military targets in Iran. Right. Pretty major escalation, right? Yeah. But then you see Iranian state TV showing everyday life going on like nothing happened. Hmm. Shops are open. People are going about their day. It's this stark contrast that we really need to examine. Yeah, that's wild. It's almost like a purposeful attempt to project this sense of normalcy in the middle of what many would consider a crisis. Exactly. It's not just about managing how the public in Iran sees things. Right. It's a signal to the international community like, hey, we're not phased by these attacks. This is just our new normal. So is Iran trying to downplay how serious things are, or are they actually adjusting to this higher level of conflict? Probably a bit of both. Okay. By showing this image of resilience, they're hoping to stop things from escalating further. But at the same time, they're also preparing their people for the possibility that this conflict could keep going. It's a strategic way to make something that was once unthinkable seem normal. And on the other side, you have Israel making some pretty bold statements. Right. An Israeli military spokesperson said that they now have wider freedom of action within Iran. Those are some pretty loaded words. What's the real message there? Oh, this goes way beyond just saying that they have military power. It's Israel signaling a total change in how they approach Iran. They're drawing a line saying, we will act inside Iran if we think it's needed and we can do it. So it's like they're establishing new rules of engagement. Yeah. But how does that actually play out? I mean, we've seen this testing the waters idea before, haven't we? Absolutely. Remember the assassination of that Hezbollah leader in Tehran right before the missile attacks from Iran? Yeah. That was a major test, pushing boundaries to see how Iran would respond. Then the Israeli airstrikes become another test, upping the ante to see how Iran and the rest of the world react. So each action is a calculated gamble, mm -hmm. a move in this high stakes game where the goal is to redefine the acceptable norms of behavior. Exactly. And the more these actions happen without major consequences, the more they just become accepted as part of the new normal. It's a chilling thought, but it makes a lot of sense. It's like they're slowly moving the goalposts, yeah. making what was once unthinkable seem almost routine. Right. And it's not just about military stuff. It's about shaping perceptions like what's common sense in geopolitics, you know? So how does this whole idea of common sense play into what's happening between Israel and Iran? Think about it this way. Yeah. If you convince the world that Israel taking action inside Iran is just common sense, well, then you've basically changed the rules, haven't you? You've shifted what's acceptable. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. But how do you actually go about changing what the whole world thinks is common sense? It's a long game, but you got to start by controlling the narrative. Okay. Our source uses this phrase, a thought, thinks you common sense. Right. It's basically saying, make it common sense that Israel has this freedom to operate in Iran. So it's not just about having the ability, it's about making it seem expected. Right. Like it was bound to happen. Exactly. You're making something that would have been provocative a few years ago seem totally normal. You do that by taking a bunch of calculated steps and testing the waters with each one. Like that trial and error approach we talked about before. Yeah. So every action is a test to see how Iran will react, how the international community responds, and then they just adjust their strategy as they go. Exactly. It's constant feedback back and forth. Okay. Like a strategic dance between action and reaction. And as these actions happen more and the reactions get less severe, right. the line of what's acceptable starts to move. This is all starting to sound familiar, kind of like what we've seen with China in the South China Sea, right? Totally. Like building islands, putting military there, yeah. doing drills at sea, all while saying it's their territory and they're just defending themselves. Right. Classic normalization. And as time goes on, if the world doesn't really challenge these actions, 
China's claims get stronger and their presence becomes the reality. Yeah. They've completely changed the normal there, haven't they? Exactly. And that's the real danger here. If the international community doesn't step in and draw a clear line, this slow erosion of the world order as we know it can lead to a very different world and maybe a more dangerous one. So we've talked about normalizing actions, but our source material also focuses on common sense. How does manipulating that actually work? It's about shaping the stories, framing events to fit your goals. Think about how media coverage statements from officials, even social media, can change how people see things. So it's not just changing what's happening on the ground, but changing how people think. Absolutely. It's about controlling the information out there, influencing what people believe, and ultimately what they consider common sense. This is getting complicated. It's like a strategy on multiple levels. Military actions, political stuff, economic influence, and even what you might call information warfare. And when you do it right, it can completely change the balance of power and reshape the whole geopolitical scene. What might seem like chaos or random events is often part of a bigger, carefully planned strategy to change what normal means. So we've really gone deep on how countries are changing what normal means in geopolitics. But I keep thinking about what it all means for the future. What happens if these things become the new standard? Well, the implications are huge. Yeah. One of the biggest worries is the possibility of things getting more unstable and people making miscalculations. Right. As countries get golder and push limits, the risk of things accidentally escalating into conflict goes way up. It's like everyone's playing chicken. Yeah. Trying to outdo each other without really understanding what will happen if they crash. Exactly. And in a place as volatile as the Middle East, even a small mistake could be disastrous. We're not just talking about one region becoming unstable. We're talking about potential global conflict. And this leads us to another big concern that our source brings up. International norms and institutions getting weaker. If countries think they can do whatever they want, ignoring the rules and agreements, it weakens the whole system of global governance. Right. It creates a world that's much more chaotic and unpredictable, where power is everything and international law doesn't really matter. It's mm -hmm. a dangerous trend that could undo decades of progress towards a more stable and cooperative world order. So we're basically in a situation where the foundations of international relations are being shaken. This all sounds pretty grim. Is there any way to fight back against this trend? Can we stop things from getting worse? It definitely won't be easy. Yeah. But the first step is recognizing the problem and understanding what's happening. We need to be aware of how these strategies of normalization and messing with common sense are being used to shift who has power. So it's about being informed, being critical of what we see and hear. Right. And understanding the agendas of the people controlling the narrative. Exactly. We can't just sit back and take in information. We have to actively shape the future. That means questioning things, looking for different perspectives, and holding those in power accountable. And that brings us back to that final question from our source. What does this new normal mean for the future of the Middle East and the world? <laughs> right. It's a question we all need to wrestle with. It's not about predicting what will happen, but about understanding the forces shaping it and knowing that we all have a part to play in deciding what the future looks like. The choices we make today, individually and together, will have a huge impact on the world of tomorrow. That's a sobering thought. But it's also a reminder that we're not just watching this happen. We have power. We have a voice. And we have a responsibility to use them to create a future where peace, cooperation, and respect for international rules are the norm. So as you keep up with these events, remember to think critically, stay informed, and engage in constructive dialogue. Because the future isn't set in stone, it's something we build together. <laughs>